five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Hi, my name is Chris Hadfield. I'm one of Canada's astronauts. I flew in space three times. I was a colonel in the Canadian Air Force. I've done a couple spacewalks and commanded the International Space Station. Hi, my name is David Saint-Jacques. I'm an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency. You know, in the past, we've sent explorers to the moon, uh, the Apollo program, and 12 people walked on the surface. But it was, you know, it, it was like Sir Edmund Hillary just barely getting to the top of Everest. Now, our technology is good enough that we can maybe start thinking about establishing some sort of settlement there. And the first step of that is to get a ship just offshore. And the Lunar Gateway is that ship offshore, a, a, a international space station, if you will, but that is uh, permanently orbiting the moon. We will build a station, not a base, not on the moon, but in the environment of the moon, uh, it's called the Lunar Gateway. Canada will provide a robotic arm for a uh, gateway. It will be an uh, artificial intelligence enabled robotic arm to be able to do very autonomous operations. Robotics has been, you know, the, the center of our kind of contribution to human spaceflight. And it has led to so many you know, trickle-down effects on uh, medicine, for example, robotics used uh, in everyday life. Now, with the artificial intelligence that we're going to put on that new version of Canadarm, uh, that in and of itself will kind of spur an entire new segment of our economy, create great jobs for the future. Plus, of course, those space flights to the moon that are so inspiring, uh, you know, to a lot of us. And so, frankly, it's not just as an astronaut that I'm excited about this. It's as a citizen and as a father. Really, this is the kind of Canada that I want to give my kids. When I was a kid, there was absolutely no hope of a Canadian being an astronaut, let alone going to the moon. That door has been opened by Mark Garneau and then Roberta Bondar and everybody since, but never to be able to leave Earth orbit. This is a huge step for Canada. You know, a giant leap maybe. Whichever Canadian astronaut flies, will have developed it and invented it. And Canadian technology will be building the whole Lunar Gateway and thousands of Canadians are involved in doing this. Now for Artemis II, that mission to the moon, about 10 days, I believe. So that means, you know, leaving the Earth, doing a couple orbits around the Earth to check everything is okay. Then poof, leaving the Earth environment, probably two, three days to go coast to the moon. Then you slow down, you get captured by the moon gravity, and then you enter moon orbit, and then leave the moon orbit eventually and come back to the Earth. So probably 10 days altogether. People, I think, take spaceflight for granted. It is incredibly dangerous. You served as an astronaut and you worked for decades so that when the moment came, hopefully your skills were good enough that you could overcome the enormous danger and make this mission be successful. Not only is this you know, good for pushing Canadian science and technology and engineering, but also the um, what this means for the individual Canadian who's actually gonna be on board that first ship. Uh, to go all the way out to the moon and around the moon and back again, that's that's really pushing the technology the first time you try it. And my, my heart and soul will be with that person. I'm really looking forward to the process and the final result. Hasn't been decided. I, I mean, you could you could say, uh, look at the people in the core. You know, David and Jeremy were hired back in 09, and then we only hired Josh and Jenny a few years ago. So if you just did it in order of seniority, I guess it's uh, Jeremy's turn. But turns don't, uh, it doesn't always work out that way. Even if we said for sure it's going to be whomever, we, we'd be lying because there's still a lot of a lot of time between here and then. NASA, the Americans have not uh, assigned their crew members either. We can only achieve these high standards by working together. So whoever will be assigned to those missions uh, will have the full support of the other three and will all be working, if you want, backstage while they are on stage. I would love to, oh yeah, I would love to see these sites. I mean, these, uh, I think it's such an incredible source of inspiration. I remember as a boy, as a young kid, the first time that looking at these photos of the Earth seen from space, first time I kind of understood what I was looking at, you know, and uh, realized, okay, this is where I am. Whoa. But, Daddy, where's the photographer? Well, David, the photographer is on the moon. And that completely changed my perspective of reality. I'm very 
tuned in and actively involved with space technology and Canadian space activities. So yeah, but if you're asking me if I'd mm -hmm. like to fly to the moon, sure, I'd love to fly to the moon. But uh, you know, I flew in space three times, which which matches the most any Canadian ever has with Mark Carneau and I both have. And I've been in space for half a year and I've commanded a spaceship. So I recognize just how incredibly lucky I've been and, and the privilege that I've had. And uh, you know, it, it's, it's other people's turn. Mm -hmm. But if it becomes commonplace, sure, I, I, I would love to go, thanks. In the United States, uh, during the Apollo program, back when I was 10, 12 years old, there have never been more PhDs per capita prior to it or, or in the 10 years after the Apollo program. It inspired people to see themselves differently. They thought, wow, if, if, if we can do that, if other people can do that, if normal looking guys like Neil and Buzz and Mike Collins can do that, then what could I do? And, and the, the echo of that has, has been huge for United States because of their guts in committing to a program like that. And that same sort of process it has just been committed to today. And, and so the short term stuff, you know, the building of Canada Arm 3, all of the technological work, all of the things we're gonna de develop and invent, and that's all great. But there's also a long-term ripple event of just self-awareness and capability right across Canada that is come, going to come from it. So uh, I, I think it's it's a terrific development. I'm immensely proud of our astronaut corps, the four folks that are in it right now. Very very capable Canadians, but I'm really uh, you know excited about their future. You know you, you got to wear shades. It's pretty exciting.